Hello everyone from Math 2200, Discrete Mathematics. It's Professor Wenson here again with a video on your Zybooks section 10.4. It's more on counting, and it's titled Counting Permutations. Let's get to it. So one of the most common applications of the generalized product rule you know, that you saw in a previous section is in counting permutations. An R permutation is a sequence of R items with no repetitions, okay, no, re no repeated objects, all taken from the same set. So consider the set X is, you know, the set of people, John, Paul, George, and Ringo. Those names may sound familiar. The sequences, you know, with or, you know, these are ordered triples here. Paul, comma, Ringo, comma, John, and John, comma, George, comma, Paul. Now those are both examples of three permutations over X. All right, they're sequences where, again, order matters. Uh, in permutations. Permutations are orderings. Right, so John, then George, then Paul is a totally different permutation than George, John, and Paul. And they explain that here, right? In a sequence, order matters. So like they're saying here, Paul, Ringo, John is different than Ringo, Paul, John. Right? Even though they have the same three people in the sequence, they're in a different order. So they count as a different three permutation. All right, so I'll play this animation here for us. Uh, so we're using the generalized product rule to count the number of five permutations from a set of size eight. So you see it says, uh, here, here's a set with eight elements, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. And if you're selecting, if you're trying to, you know, select a five permutation using that product rule, you know, there are eight selections for the first choice. And then once you've chosen, you know, the first choice, say F for their example here, then you only have seven for the second slot. Then once the first two are chosen, you only have six for the third slot, then only five, then only four. So the total number of five permutations you can create from a set of eight objects, eight different objects, right? eight distinct objects, you can tell them apart, is eight times seven times six times five times four, which is 6,720. Right? So there are, you know, if I'm given objects, different looking objects, A through H, the number of five permutations I can create with those objects is 6,720. <clears throat> okay, so again, a pretty simple application of the generalized product rule. Right, now they write this as a particular, now there's a formula for this as well involving factorials. So let r and n be positive integers with r less than or equal to n. The number of r permutations from a set with n elements is denoted by p n comma r. Uh, you'll also see on your calculator it looks a little different than this and I'll show you. So this is the number of r permutations taken from a set with n elements. Right? So you have n elements and you're picking r of them out. And the number of permutations that you can create is n factorial divided by and then the quantity n minus r factorial. Or if you simplified it, be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to n minus r plus 1. Right? Which is what this is up here. 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. This is p with the 8 and 5, or 8p5. 
Hmm. Okay, so let me, let's read through this example here. You can read more of that. So say a manager has five different jobs that need to get done on a given day. She has eight employees with whom she can assign to the jobs, you know, whom she can assign to the jobs. A job only requires one person, and no person can be assigned more than one job. So, right, so no repeats. How many possible ways can she do the assignment? Right. So I know they have it written down already, but pull up a piece of paper here. I'm just going to pull it up on the screen with the book. So the, the value of n here would be 8. Right? You have eight. She has 8 employees to choose from. Right? That's the set that she's picking. <coughs> the value of r here is the 5 jobs she's trying to fill. Right? And so you see that sequence that she's creating this, you know, a five permutation, right? A sequence or a five permutation. Right. She's trying to fill a sequence where, you know, there's you know, so many ways to fill job one, so many ways to fill job two, so many ways to fill job three, and job four, and job five. Let's say J4, J5. So she's trying to create these ordered five tuples with, you know, certain employee names. And again, these are eight different people. All right, none of them are, you know, they're not like clones or something. So for the first job, she has, you know, eight choices. And applying the generalized product rule, <clears throat> multiply that by you know the number of ways she has to fill the, se the second job. Once the first person's there is seven, then the first two jobs are filled, so she only has six people to choose from for the third job, and then five for the fourth job, and four for the fifth job. So the number of different five permutations, the number of ways she could fill these five jobs. And the, the, the notation for this that they're using is P, and then in parentheses, the number of objects you're picking from, 8, comma, and then the number of objects you're picking out of that 8 objects. So, you know, picking 5 jobs, 5 people to fill jobs. Now, in some other textbooks, you may see this written as 8, and then, then the P, and then the 5. And you're going to see this on the calculator as well. I'll show you how to find this, you know, calculating of R permutations on the calculator. And as I said, this is 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. So one way to think about this is you start at 8, and then you keep multiplying by one integer lower until you get 5 factors. So 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4, and there are your 5 factors. Now the formula involving factorial comes from this. You know, if I were to complete the factorial, you know, multiply by 3 factorial in the numerator, and multiply by 3 factorial in the denominator, then we get our numbers from the formula with the factorial. You know, the numerator would be 8 factorial, divided by, and the denominator is 3 factorial, which is that 8 minus 5, you know, the quantity n minus r factorial. And let me show you uh, where this is coming up on the calculator. Alright, so if you have a newer version of a calculator, to 83, 84 plus, just, and this is on the old ones too, it's just how, how you enter things changes. Uh, hit the math button and then if you go over to PRB, the PRB menu, you see number two there? It says NPR. 
This is the number of R permutations you can create selecting from N objects. Right. I like to say N pick R. Now when you enter this on one of the older ones, you see you have to put a number first and then a number after it. Some of the newer ones, you'll just enter a value in the two slots for N and R. So what I need to do here is if I want to calculate, you know, I have eight objects, so I'm going to put the number eight, and I'm counting how many five permutations I can take from create from those eight objects. So I go again the math button over to PRB probability area and then enter NPR and then the five, right? That that is eight P five or the P with the eight and five eight eight comma five that I have written here. And this is that, you know, this is the same as the example earlier. It's 6,720. All right. So the number of ways she could fill these jobs, these five jobs, is 6,720 know, ways. All right. And again, order matters. Position matters. Because if John has job one and Carol has job two, that's totally different than if Carol's doing job one and John's doing job two, right? Because they're different jobs. The position matters. And when position matters and order matters, you're calculating the numbers of these permutations, right? When you hear the word permutation, think order. Position matters. Okay? All right. So then they go through this here and same thing. All right, so let's do some more. All right, so we have number one in this activity. A red, blue, and green die are thrown. Each die has six possible outcomes. How many outcomes are possible in which the three dice all show different numbers? So, again, I'm trying to create a, a sequence. Red die, what does the red die show? What does the blue die show? What does the green die show? So again, I'll go to a piece of paper. Now, there's, this is a sequence of three. You know, what does the red die show? What does the blue die show? What does the green die show? show. And the value of n here would be uh, 6, because right? each die has 6 options. Now, <clears throat> normally if they just said how many possible outcomes are there, there would be 6 times 6 times 6, because you, you have 6 possible outcomes for each slot. But they did say that no no number repeats. Right? No number repeats. So that means, you know, when I'm saying what does the red die show, there are six options there. And then what does the blue die show? Well, say the red die was showing a three, then the blue die can't show a three, so there are only five options for what the blue die can show. And then times, and then for the green die in this sequence, you know, if this shows a three and this shows a, a six, this one can't show a three or a six, so you only have four options left. And again, that would just be that P, you have six out, you know, six outcomes for each, but you're cho and you're choosing three of them with no repeats, right? This. This is for when you're picking things and nothing can be repeated, this permutation formula. Again, this is 6 times 5 times 4, or if you were to multiply the top and bottom by the rest of it, 3 factorial, you'd have 6 factorial you know, divided by 3 factorial if you want. <clears throat> and that's uh, you know, 30 times 4, it's 120. There'd be 120 different sequences I could create. You know, and I could show you just a few of them. You know, 
we could have the red die show one, then the gr blue die show two, the green die show three. Then one, two, four. One, then two, then five. One, then two, then six. Uh, one, then three, then two. Uh, one, then three, then four. 1, then 3, then 5, 1, then 3, then 6. I mean, you see what I'm saying? Like, there are 120 of these things. <laughs> all right, I don't want to write them all. I mean, I just wrote uh, 8 there. <laughs> there are 112 more. So that's why we're learning these rules, right? Because you don't, there are a lot of scenarios where you, you don't want to write all possibilities down. All right, that would be a... Uh, Either way, take way too long or be way too tedious. Right, so we have 120 different ways that that could happen. Right, uh, different questions, same formula though. The same formula is going to be used throughout this uh, this section. There are five computers and three students. You know, how many ways are there? for the students to sit at the computers if no computer has more than one student and each student is seated at a computer. So you have the five computers and three students. All right. So if you basically student one, you know, which of the five computers does student one sit at? Student, uh, so I'll, I'll write it out as a sequence thing again. All right. We're creating sequences. So I've got here's you know stu student one's computer. And then the next one, student two's computer. And then student three's computer. Right. And there are five computers, right? So like n equals five here, and you can't repeat again. I can't. I can't have two students sitting at the same computer. And there are the five computers. So hey, where does student one go sit? Well, they have five choices. But then once they've sat at a computer, no one else can sit there. So then student two only has four choices. And then once those two have sat down, student three only has three choices left. Right? So this is that P again, and the order matters because if Bob sits at compu one computer, <clears throat> you know, if the first computer is for Bob and the second computer is for Sally, that's totally different if the second computer went to Bob and the first computer went to Sally. Right? The order matters, P position matters, so that's why it's counting permutations here. And this would be that p with the 5 comma 3, or like you say on the calculator, 5, it would be 5p3 like this. And you know, again, 5, that's 5 times 4 times 3. Or if you want to fill out the factorials, you'd multiply the numerator and denominator by 2 factorial. And it'd have 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial. But either way, you know, this is a pretty easy one. This is 20 times 3, this, there'd be 60 different ways that these computers could be assigned. <clears throat> and again, I could go through the sequences, you know, look at some possibilities. So like, say the first student is assigned the first computer, the second student is assigned the second computer, and the third student is assigned the third computer. Well, I could also just do this, you know, one, two, then four, or first, second, and then fifth or first, third, second, first, third, fourth, you know, and so on. Again, there, there are 60 of these, 60 of these different sequences that I could create, that I could make when assigning these. So I don't want to write all those, we're just asked for the number. Right. Yeah, just 60 here. And uh, I'll leave this third one to you. All right. Now, as mentioned before, you know, a permutation without the parameter r 
So just a permutation in general is a sequence that contains each element of a finite set exactly once, right? <coughs> Pardon me, wow. I'm sorry. Where every element shows up exactly once, right? So no repeats as before. For example, the set with elements A, B, and C has six permutations. Right, you have A, B, C, B, A, C, C, A, B, A, C, B, B, C, A, C, B, A. And in fact, that's just taking a set of n elements and a, a creating an n permutation, just per, doing a permutation with all of them. So you could call that p n comma n. And that just ends up being n factorial. All right, so this is telling me here that the number of ways to rearrange n different objects is n factorial. Okay. So for instance, a wedding party consists of a bride, a groom, two bridesmaids, and two groomsmen lined up for a photo. How many ways are there for the wedding party to line up? All right. So let me, again, let me write some of this stuff down. Okay, so you have the bride. I'll just put BR like that. There's a bride, a groom. I'll put GR for groom. Two bridesmaids. So bridesmaid number one, BM1. Bridesmaid number two, BM2 and two groomsmen. Right, so groomsmen number one, groomsmen number two. Right, And these are all different people. You can tell them apart. So the number of objects I'm messing with here, that uh, I don't mean to call people objects, but the number of objects I'm messing with here is uh, you know six. And what they're asking us is how many ways can I put them in a lineup? How many sequences can I put them in? So that's creating a sequence with six spots. All right, like that. And in the first, you know, I have six choices for the first, and then once somebody stands in the first position, then I only have five for the second, and then once those two people stand, then there's only four, four people that could possibly stand in the third position, and then three, and then two, and then one. So that's P, and again, it's just, I have six objects, and, I, and I'm rearranging all six of them. And so P with the six comma six here, or six P six like this. And this is just six times five times four times three times two, but I don't want to write all that. That's just six factorial. Now remember, that's six factorial divided by, you know, six minus six is zero factorial, or if you were using the formula. And hopefully you remember what, the, you know, talking about factorials before. Uh, zero factorial is defined to be one. Okay, so this is just six factorial, uh, which is 720. There, there'd be 720 different ways to rearrange these six people. And so we're putting that here. Yeah, 720. Alright, um, now sometimes, you know, you combine rules. <coughs> so the next example combines the product rule with counting permutations. So consider again the set of the Beatles, right? John, Paul, George, and Ringo. These four would like to sit on a bench together. But Paul and John would like to sit next to each other. So how many possible seatings are there? All right, so let me just answer this question right now. I'll show you on a piece of paper. All right, so I'm going to write down the, just their initials. Right, we have these people: John, Paul, George, and Ringo. Okay, and it said they'd like to sit on a bench to get uh, on a bench, but we want uh, John and Paul to sit next to each other. 
So we want J next to P. So that's either J, P, or P, then J, right? I want those next to each other. So if I'm applying the product rule, and you know the, the, they want to be next to each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider I'm going to consider John and Paul together as one object. Because they want to be next to each other. Right? They come as a pair. Oop, together as one object. So really what I have here are three objects. There's John and Paul. They have to be next to each other. And then I have George. Then I have Ringo. All right. So I'm really looking at three people or three objects instead of four. Okay. Now, first choice. All right. The first procedure is I'm going to, you know, I can choose what order the three objects come in. Yeah. Well that would just be you know permuting three you know three objects and you know rearranging all three of them or three factorial. Right, so there are three factorial ways of rearranging these three objects, John and Paul together, George and Ringo. But then I have one more choice to make. Right, so this will be times because you know when you have one choice independent of another choice and you're counting up the total number of choices, remember that's, that's you're applying the product rule here. Times the, sec the number of ways to make this second choice. The second choice to make would be, uh, does John sit to the left of Paul? Or does Paul sit to the left of John? So in what order are John and Paul sitting next to each other? J and P. In what order are they sitting next to each other? Well, I mean, there's only two two objects here, so that would be two factorial, or just two, and you know, three factorial is just six. Three times two times one. So then, pointing these together gives me the the total number of ways they could sit on a bench and have John and Paul sit next to each other. Uh, the total number of ways that they could do that then would be, you know, the number of ways I can make that first choice. You know, put them in order: six, which is three factorial, times the number of ways I can rearrange John and Paul next to each other, which is two. So there would be 12 different seating arrangements possible. Right. All right. And if you want, now 12 isn't that many. I could I could list them. Now remember, John and Paul have to sit next to each other. So I could have John, Paul, and then George, and then Ringo. Or, you know, I could have Paul, then John, and then George, then Ringo. Um, I could have John, then Paul, then Ringo, then George. Or Paul, then John, then Ringo, then George. Uh, I could have George, <clears throat> then John, then Paul. Again, they have to be next to each other. And then Ringo, and then just switch John and Paul. Uh, or I could have Ringo, then John and Paul, and then George, and again just just switch Paul and John. So this is eight so far. I could have Ringo, then George, then John and Paul. Again, they have to be next to each other, and then just switch John and Paul. I could have George, then Ringo, then John and Paul, or George and Ringo, and then Paul and John. 
And uh, there you go. There's your 12 different seating arrangements where, you know, John and Paul have to be next to each other. Now, again, we don't want to do this. I just did this because, you know, it's the first time you're seeing this stuff. You're not going to have to list out all the options in most cases. Now, if there's only like 12, I mean, you can do it. But, but what if there's like, you know, 1,000, 6,270 or whatever it was, you know, you're not going to write them all. You're not going to write all those. So in most cases, you'll just be asked for a number. Right? How many ways uh, can it be done? Now, they, they do show you here the 12 different rearrangements. All right. All right, so let's take a look at another question. All right, so same wedding party as before. You know, you have a bride, a groom, two bridesmaids, and two groomsmen. They line up for a photo. How many ways are there for the wedding party to line up so that the bride is next to the groom? <coughs> well, this is pretty similar, just with, you know, larger numbers to the John and Paul, George and Ringo question. You know, we want the bride next to the groom. So I'm going to consider bride groom. All right, I want the bride right next to the groom. So I'm going to consider this one object. And there are two different ways. You know, there's only two, two, two objects here. There's only two places in this one object. So they could either sit that way or they could sit this way. Well, not sit, but stand, you know, for the picture. So bride then groom or groom then bride. So say that was my first choice, right? So two options there. And then we're going to multiply by the way we can rearrange all the objects, right? Now, the, all the objects, you had the bride and groom together. And then the two bridesmaids, right? Bridesmaid one, bridesmaid two, the two groomsmen. Groomsmen one, groomsmen two. Now, again, I'm considering this as one object. So now there are five objects here. Right, five objects, because the bride and groom are considered one. So the number of ways to rearrange these is five factorial. And then put it all together, right? The ways that the, you know, the number of ways the bride or groom could stand next to each other is two, times the number of ways all of them could be next to each other so that the bride and groom are together is five factorial. So the total number of arrangements for this photo is uh, again two times five factorial or five factorial times two it doesn't matter what order you make these choices in with the product rule uh, and five factorial is 120 and then two times that would be 240 all right there'd be 240 different ways to rearrange this wedding party uh, and still have the bride and groom next to each other Two forty. All right. All right. And then your challenge activity. Notice they're going to have you enter things. You know, if there are permutations involved, they're going to have to just have you enter permutations with the p and then the n comma k or n comma r. So let me show you a couple examples. I'm not going to do all six of these. So suppose each character in a password is either a digit, right, 0 through 9, there are 10 of those, or a lowercase letter, which, you know, there are 26 of those, little a through z. How many valid passwords are there with the given restrictions? All right, so if the length were 18 and no character repeats, well, let's see, you got 36 characters to choose from and a length of 18, and you're rearranging just 18 of them. You're picking 18 of those 36 characters and putting them in some arrangement. And again, the order will matter here because you're talking passwords. You know, a position, the order that characters come in matters. So this is definitely a permutation problem. And it's very simply P, you know, I have, again, 30, I have 36 characters to choose from, comma, and I'm just, you know, do, I'm creating these length, these passwords, these sequences of length 18, where where nothing repeats. Right? And it's, that's all they want, because that's a pretty big number, probably. All right, let me pull up the calculator and show you what that number would be. All right, 36 characters. Go to that NPR, and then we're, you know, picking 18 of them and rearranging them. So that's a huge 
number. 5.8 you know, times 10 to the 25th, that's what this big E thing here means. That means move the decimal place to the right 25 places. This is a huge number. So that's why they're having you, you know, enter permutations this way instead of actually entering a number. Same deal here. Um, so again, same you know, number of characters. You got 10 digits, 26 letters to choose from. The length is 14. <clears throat> no character repeats, but it must start with an I. So in that first position is an I. So you have one choice there, one I. And then for the remaining 13, you have to choose from the remaining 35 characters, right? Because you've already placed the I down, so you can't use I again, right? No character repeats. So then you have 25 letters and 10 digits, so you have 35 characters left for the remaining 13 positions. So this would be, you know, permutations. I have 35 characters to choose from, and I'm filling 13 positions. And that's all, right? Because again, the first one has to be an I. And again, that would probably be some pretty big number, which you can find in your calculator if you wish. And I'll just do one more of these and leave the other ones to you. Um, so suppose the length is 11, no character repeats, and it has to start with F3. So F and 3 are no longer usable. So instead of having 36 characters to choose from, now I only have 34, because F and 3 are used. And, you know, they've already filled the first two positions, so I have to fill in the remaining nine positions, right? It's length 11. So that's permutations. Uh, you know, I, again, I'd have 34 characters to choose from, and I'm filling in the remaining nine positions. So there'd be 34 P9 ways to do this. All right, and I'll just take a look at the other ones. So yeah. <clears throat> now this one just says must contain a Q. And maybe I'll do this one more. <laughs> so length 17. You know, no character repeats, but it must have a Q in it. Now the Q, how many choices do you have for the Q? You got 17 choices. So I got 17 times, uh, that I'm so at first I choose which position does the Q go in, because right, it's got to have one. So I, I have 17 choices for that. And then I'm filling the remaining 16, I'm filling the remaining 16 spots with the, you know, some of the other 35 characters. And that would be P, you know, per, number, of pre, uh, number of 16 permutations out of 35. Right, like this. Because I've already used the Q, right? Can't use it again, no character repeats. But again, the first choice I made was, you know, where does the Q go? How many ways can I place the Q? 17. I have 17 spots where I can put a Q. And then for the remaining 16 spots, I got the 35, again, with no repeats, so it's 35 P16. All right, and then you got this. All right, you, you get the idea. Hopefully these help. All right. Yeah. Well, gee, length is six. It must have these, so does six factorial, or P6. Uh, you should be able to do these. All right, um, then you have your additional exercises. Right, you know, and some of these are assigned. I think all of them are. There's only four of them with some parts. Uh, but if they're not, you know, I would still recommend looking at all of them just to get more exposure to the material. You can also look at the solutions if you need to, right, to check yourself, right, just, you know, hold off on looking on the, at the solutions until you actually tried the problem for yourself. Because you're not going to learn anything if you just copy solutions down and don't try. And if you have any questions, of course, you know, send them my way, send me a message, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And thank you very much for watching.